All right, welcome to Jenkins Documentation's office hours. Um, so proposed agenda topics, how to contribute a pipeline documentation example to a plugin. Uh, this is a little different than the typical documentation workflow. So I wanted to show it and we may use the recording and host a subset of the recording on the Jenkins YouTube channel so that we can point people to it when they have a question, how do they do this? Um, then contributor summit is a topic, wiki migration plan, pull request progress, and new contributors. Any other topics we should add to the agenda? Looks good. Okay, cool. So then um, let, let me first give an overview of what the challenge is. So pipeline documentation, it's a pretty common complaint that, hey, please, could you give me a, an example of how to do, oops, how to do Jenkins pipeline documentation, uh, Jenkins pipeline. I want to do such and such a thing, but I would really like an example because we learn very much better by examples than we do by anything else. And so one user had uh, said, hey, here's an example. Uh, they were using the Jococo plugin. And so I am going to look for the Jococo plugin here on the pipeline steps reference page. So this is reference documentation on the Jococo plugin. But if we look at this <laughs> reference documentation, there are a whole bunch of arguments. Delta class coverage type string is optional, but no explanation of what that is or what it, what, how it applies or how it does not apply. Etc. And and it's tough to know where to look for that information because it's not here. And some of them are not, for instance, class pattern to me is not immediately obvious what it means. Or the one that the original submitter said was, hey, I don't understand the meaning of minimum branch coverage. And here's what it says. It says it is an optional argument of type string. And that's it. Uh -huh. So, so correctly, the, the author of this problem said, Hey, I need to know what this means, did some searching and found this stack overflow article that actually described what it means. But now how do we get that into the, this page and how do we get it to Jenkins users? So it's not only that it needs to go into this page, it also needs to go into um, a Jenkins installation. So because online help is available for, for Jenkins installation. So if I look here as an example, if I look at the pipeline syntax link here and do something with Jacoco. So the step is called Jacoco. I think I've got it installed. I do. So when I click Jacoco here, here are a bunch of fields but notice the, the question mark over here on the far right does not exist for the path to class directories. Right. Or for the always run coverage collection. And so the, the absence of help here also hurts the user experience because they come into this place and they say, oh, I don't know what this means. Okay, what if I disable that? All right, here there's help for that but there's no help for always run coverage collection, even if build has failed or aborted. And these things, it's like, I don't know what those fields mean. So, so there are lots of places where we could, what can we do to help the user? And the nice thing is when we add help to this page, mm -hmm. it also automatically will be populated into this page. All right. So, so the, there's a, a plus there. If we can get help into the uh, this online page, we can get help also into the Jenkins.io doc site page. Okay. The help though comes from the plugin source code itself. So in, whereas I'm I'm accustomed to writing documentation for www.jenkins.io, in this case, in order to get something into this page on the Jenkins.io site. I have to go edit a plugin, not 
edit a uh, not edit a page on the Jenkins.io GitHub site. So now let's go find the source code for the Jococo plugin. So Jenkins plugins, and I'm going to search for Jococo. Okay, here's the Jococo plugin. And we see on the right here, a link to the GitHub repository that tracks this plugin. So here is the GitHub repository. And I'm going to, actually, I've got to fork this repository because I need a copy of it. And then I'm going to clone this thing and start some work on it. So let's get us a nice new terminal window. All right. And here we're going to say git clone. And then I had copied the URL to that repository. CD into that directory. And then I'm going to do a git add remote upstream. And now we're going to add the upstream repository, which is this one. Okay, whoops, git remote add. Maybe that way. Yeah, git pull all of things. All right, so all right, so I now have my local branch master up to date with the upstream master and reasonably current with uh, the latest release of this particular plugin. So I need a new branch, add um, pipeline parameter, let's see, pipeline help, how about that? All right, so now what we need is we need to figure out which the what thing it is that we're going to add help to. So the thing that, that Anton noted was, hey, a minimum branch coverage is the thing that we want to find. So I'm gonna go look for that in the source code. Oops, shame on me. searching for it in the source code. And it was minimum branch coverage. And I want to search for case insensitive. Okay, so here is Java source file for minimum branch coverage is mentioned there inside Jacoco Publisher. And here it is getting assigned, and here it is being referenced. Okay, so here is the form that takes the data in. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so here is, here is the form. Now we need to find some online help. There was some online help in this. So let's see where the online help is. And online help for Jenkins plugins is typically written as HTML files. So for example, here we see help build over build, help change build status, help skip copy of source files. Let's see if we can find that in the UI. So path to exec files. Here, let's just borrow some text and go looking for that. Okay, so here it is. Here is the help for that page. So if we look at 
this thing, what you'll see is allows to configure various aspects of Jococo code coverage. So here is the online help for that in this directory. So it's in source, main, source, main, resources, Hudson, plugins, Jococo, Jococo publisher. And how did I find it? I just searched for it using, using my IDE's search utilities, right? So whether that's Visual Studio Code or, um, um, let's see, IntelliJ, or in my case, Emacs or VI, any one of them, you can just use whatever tools you have to search and find an existing example of a help file. All right. Now, the challenge here is we would like to add some help for, let's see, what about, we had this other thing that was looking for minimum branch coverage and it's in, I had more places that, oh, oh, oh. There we go. Okay, so again, minimum branch coverage is, is a variable inside Jococo Publisher. Since it's inside, whoops, yeah, since it's inside Jococo Publisher, then we should be able to put the online help at the same location as that other help was. So here is help.html. And Oh yeah, this is gonna be nice and simple. So we're going to say, we wanna create a new file. Instead of calling it help.html, we're going to call it help dash. And then the name of the, of the thing that we're adding help to. So it was minimum branch coverage. So here's my new help file. Okay. And doesn't exist yet. So, and I am just going to insert into that thing the boilerplate that's already there. So it seems to use divs to do the markup. So that's great. So now we just say, we put in there what the submitter told us is good text for minimum coverage. So found this. So take this text, if coverage is below the minimum, okay, we'll take that text. If coverage is below this minimum, comma, comma. the build fails. And we like sentence per sentence per uh, line because it's easier to code review. If the coverage is below the maximum. Ah, because um, there is also a maximum. There's right. a maximum goes every minimum. Right. Okay. So is below this minimum the build if if the coverage is below the maximum? How would we say it? Specified by, uh, and now we go get the other variable. Or do we make, or do we, is this one just for the minimum and then the maximum is for the maximum? Yeah, well, see, the, yeah. because they both, they, they both are involved in deciding what to do with the coverage or what to do with the build result, I think we ought to describe the two of them with pretty much the same, same text. Thing. So I was okay. thinking if the coverage is below the maximum specified by maximum branch coverage, um, the build is unstable. Okay. And then if the build is, if it is, if the coverage, if the coverage is above maximum branch coverage. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Okay, so test this, help me understand. 
Um, first of all, let's go, if we're going to specify, why don't we put in front of below this minimum, why don't we specify minimum branch? Oh, coverage yes, yes, good line. idea, right. Is and below then we can just copy this and the below minimum branch coverage. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, good. If the uh, min, min, minimum. Okay, if coverage is below minimum branch coverage, the build fails. If the coverage is below maximum branch coverage and above, isn't this what they're trying to say? Is that there are there are three states for a, a Jenkins build: failed, unstable, or success. Uh -huh. If we're below minimum, fail. If we're between maximum and, how about we do it this way? Above minimum branch coverage and below maximum, the build is unstable. Why? That doesn't make sense. Why not? Okay, if I tell you that you have to eat at least one apple a day, but no more than five apples a day, uh -huh. then you are successful if you're under maximum. And this has got a problem that you've, that you've got to be over maximum to be successful. Right, right. So I think what you're saying is that's a really surprisingly named Logically, this doesn't feel. make sense. Right. So, and, and, yeah, I think I think I I see your point, and I I'd like don't... to check this to make sure that somebody didn't make a typo in spec flow or something. Ah, uh, that's possible, Cause, right? Because that right. doesn't it just doesn't make sense. Uh huh. Right. That okay. my ma that it's only successful if I exceed my maximum. A maximum right, is right. a rail. I don't go over maximum. Yeah, and so I th I think I understand your point, and I think that's a good thing for us to to check to see so because i from the text there i suspect that this was written by someone whose native language is russian could could be yeah could to, be the to allow construct uh -huh. is right. a dead giveaway and it makes sense english should have it but we don't right so let's see so with all these strings that look very similar and if you're in your non-native language it's easy to right okay the build is unstable if ah yeah it's nice okay the build is unstable if the coverage is above minimum and below maximum okay the build succeeds if the co coverage is above maximum branch coverage yeah so for me, it's the, the the parameter, the names of those variables is a little surprising, but let's let's assume that this is accurate, and we there are some more steps we need to take to to assure this is actually working. So okay, all right. So we've done we've attempted to add help for minimum branch coverage. Now we would also want to do the same thing for maximum branch coverage, because I think it's, it should be the same text. Right. So let's put it in addition, an additional file, the same exact text. Okay, now if we look at what's pending in my, I've got two files that haven't been registered with source control yet. Okay, so now here we are, files registered. And now I'm going to try and build this thing. Uh -huh. So I'm going to do a Maven HPI colon run. So what this will do is attempt to run Jenkins. Actually, I need to switch computers. This I've made a mistake, Meg. This is good. This particular, well, here, I'll just do this. I need to kill a process that's already running that would make this job hard. Ah. Okay, so now back to where we were, we're going to say maven clean. 
uh, and we're going to say HPI colon run. And I think what this will do is take the Jococo plugin with our changes, compile it, and start a Jenkins that loads that Jococo plugin so we can look at it with the use from the user interface and see if it has the uh, yeah, has the help that file. we just added, right? Right. Now, I'm not sure where it's going to appear. So let's go looking to see if we can figure out where it's going to appear. So here is, oh, and I just stopped my other process. So we'll have to look at a different Jenkins server. Okay, so how about let's look here at pipeline checks bin. So pipeline syntax is here, Jacoco. Uh, apparently, I haven't installed the Jacoco plugin on this Jenkins. So let's install the Jacoco plugin here while we're waiting. Okay, install without restart. Okay. Now, if we're oops, if we're lucky, we can do the same thing again find that pipeline syntax and it will have added Jococo. No, I have to restart. Okay, just a minute. Okay, and let's check to see how this is going. So this has started and is running. Good. Okay, so I may be able to to connect to it already. So in my case, I need a new tunnel. Port 8080. And sorry about this, but I because I don't run uh, this is all development on my Windows Windows computer. It's I have to use this little tunneling thing. So Okay, so 8080, port 22, save. Okay, let's try this. Okay. All right, so it says it's running a tunnel. I'm gonna try it. It is. Oh, Meg, I'm so proud. That's good. Okay, so what we see here is I'm running a tunnel to Jenkins, in this case, 2.164.3. Uh, and let's, if we look at the list of plugins, we should see manage plugins installed Jacoco. There it is. Good. Yeah. And it notice it's got this snapshot private M weight stuff on it. Okay. So we were successful. We have built the Jacoco plugin from from my little repository there and have have it running now. So now we need to create a new item. And oh, that's no help. It's not got pipeline installed. So we have to go get a bunch of plugins. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. It's just that's that's okay. So we're going to, I'm going to cheat and take the easy way out. Let's, oh, and this is interestingly old version of Jenkins 2.164.3. Let's choose a pipeline. Yeah, see, it won't. Okay. So, so we've encountered a problem. Notice this pretty red text here. This plugin requires depend, dependent plugins that need Jenkins 204. Well, I can fix that with a very simple command line change. So instead of make clean HPI colon run, I'm gonna add one more thing, minus D Jenkins.version equals 2.263.4. I wanna use the most recent version of Jenkins instead of using 
Um, ah. So we're going to try it now and let's see if this will work. If it does work, it's a lot easier because then I can do a whole bunch of things. Okay, so it did not like that. So now we have to find out. Well, let's try it with a little different version then. Is pipeline not one of the suggested plugins or did you do this system without the suggested plugins? It when you when you use this HPI colon run technique, it doesn't it doesn't take you through the path to get to the suggested plugins. Okay, yeah, I just I just wondered if if Norm, I thought people they don't have to install any plugins to do a pipeline, do they? Uh, they actually do. Oh, okay. Plugins are required for pipeline, but but the default, uh, if you choose install selected plugins, will install them for you. Right. Yeah. So okay. so then it, it keeps it nice and simple. So let's go back here to um, my local. Where did I put that? No. Okay. Here. Ah, this one. Okay. Here we go. So let's reload that. Okay, and we are going to get declarative pipeline because that's usually a very good choice. Pipeline declarative, here we go. We'll take that one. <laughs> this is such an old version of Jenkins, it can't do it. I am just stuck. So we're going to have to do this with a freestyle job. So that's that's unfortunate in this case, but that's just the reality of it. So let's okay. let's create a freestyle job and look at the online help with a freestyle job and see if we can confirm it. If we Check. do a video for other people, we'll do it with the current version of Jenkins, right? Well, I, I obviously need to do some more research before I'm ready to show right. show this to anybody else. So check pipeline help. Okay. Meanwhile, I am learning stuff every second, so. All right, so let's add a, let's see, we want to record Jococo coverage report. So here it is. Okay, so change build status according, no. Okay, more than Delta thresholds. Okay, so I am not seeing any additional question marks here that I didn't see, or any help icons that I didn't see before. So I'm not sure that I was successful in adding any help. Chain disable display of source. No. Dumb question, what's determining what snippet generator is picking up? Because uh, Jococo clearly has a zillion steps and I don't see anything close to that number of options here, I think. Right. And so the way the way the snippet generator does its work is it does this. It it looks at, let's see, let's take an example from that text. So how about uh, it will actually let's go go grab the the text from the original document that the came from this one so if we grab this let's go find that in the source code here we go okay so what what pipeline does is it uses java's ability to look at itself to introspect and it will actually go in and read the data bound constructor this thing uh -huh. and says, oh, here's a constructor. In this case, it takes no arguments. And then it will look at every occurrence of the pattern public get something. So for instance, public string get minimum. What did we have there? The one we had was minimum coverage. Is that right? minimum branch, branch. coverage. Yeah. So if we look at this thing, it says, let's look at get minimum branch coverage. And we should see here, yeah, here is a public getter. And this thing, so it says, ah, there must be 
by, by convention a field named minimum branch coverage because there is a method called get minimum branch coverage that can return its value. Okay. And what controls the English that's on the snippet generator? That is the is that resource file that I was showing. Uh -huh. So let's see. Let's oh. This thing right here should appear on the resource file, on the resource page. Okay. So this thing, because what Maven, the build tool that we use for plugins, likes to do things by convention. Right. And so what they say is, hey, put, put your things in this location, we'll find them automatically. Okay. And so in this case, anything in this page that starts with help dash, um, gets used as online help for fields, for, for things. That's the online help, but I'm looking at the actual English that's on the snippet generator. Uh-huh. And when you say English in the snippet generator, you mean- Let's go back to the you snippet mean generator. This um, no, one to, or this Go back one. to the snippet generator. Okay. Fail the so. build if coverage degradation degrades more than the delta thresholds. Uh-huh. Where is that text? Yeah, let's go find that. So fail the build if coverage degrades more than the delta threshold. So so here's what we're looking for. And here it is in Jacoco Publisher config.jelly. Okay. So do you need to add something to the Chococo, whatever jelly, uh, config.jelly file for this? And no, because the, so if we look for instance at, it's, it doesn't go in config.jelly, it goes in another file that then gets loaded when ah. the user presses the, the question mark. So for example, taking okay. that exact one, fail the builder's coverage degrades. When I click the question mark, it brings up, come on, it brings up text. Well, now that's interesting. It says loading, but then it doesn't load. I wonder if I did some damage. Oh, oh, right, sorry. We were looking at, looking at the wrong Jenkins server. Let's look at this Jenkins server. Okay, so, sorry, I was looking at a Jenkins server that was stopped, therefore it was not being well behaved. Okay, so here, if we look at pipeline syntax and go for Jacoco, now when we click this question mark, check this to set the build status to failure. So if we take that text and go looking for it inside the plugin. Here it is in help build over HTML. So here's the file. Like that. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, and I see we have a bunch of steps that are Delta stuff, Delta something coverage. Right. And, and each of those would need to go into this same directory describing, oh, what does that mean? And oh, what does that mean? So we've got here, we've got change build status. Let's see if we can find that in the pipeline syntax generator. So do I see anything? Oh, here it is, change build status according to threshold. And there it is. And so now if I generate that, change build status is set to true. And what does this say? 
that really is check this to set the build stable status to. Yeah, okay, so it really is the field, the field help files are help dash field name, change build status, dot HTML. And then it's just plain HTML inside that file. Ah, and I'm looking on the step reference page, we do have check this to set the build status to unstable if coverage thresholds are violated. Right, right, exactly. Very good. So, so that so, shows up for that one. But so we have, so we've got to do something so that something is showing up for maximum star coverage and minimum star coverage. Ex yeah, so maximum branch coverage and minimum branch coverage were my initial targets. And, and those things, and, and so let's, let's take a little different approach and see if we can, we can prove that it works. So, yeah. Okay. So let's do a Maven clean skip tests install. And I'm going to do, I'm going to use a trick for me to give it, give me access to it in a, in a large scale environment very quickly. We won't, we wouldn't do this for a demo for anybody else because they won't have this particular set of tools. But okay. what we're going to do is copy the Jococo plugin. into my place where I put all of my Jenkins setup. Okay, and then I'm just gonna do a Docker run, detach. All right, so now that plugin that we just, that the Jococo plugin change we just made, I have now put it so that it will be visible on this Jenkins instance. Okay. So I just did the equivalent of that Maven HPI colon run. Right. Um, and that it, it is just the equivalent of it. But, but okay, so when, when I get around to doing this recording again, to show a, a cleaner path through it, some of the challenges will be how do we, how do we deal with an outdated Jenkins base version? And the answer is you can just compile it and place it into your own Jenkins server. So upload it to your own Jenkins server instead of using Maven HPI colon run. Right. All right, so now if I do manage Jenkins, manage plugins, and I look at the installed plugins, if I then search for Jococo, I should see snapshot something or other M weight. So that's confirmed. I'm running uh -huh. the Jococo plugin that I just built. Right. Now let's go look at it in pipeline syntax. And here's Jococo. Okay, so what we're expecting to see is that someplace disabled, now where was it that we would expect to see, okay, fail the build if degrades, yeah, that's, that's correct. Change build status according to thresholds, that's correct. Now what we don't, oh, oh, I wonder, so this one, may be really strange because these fields, oh, oh, Meg, this one's a fun one. Because I don't think, I think this is an example of a case where the online help is not accessible to the user because of the plugins, uh, more sophisticated uh, way of doing, doing their user interface. So, um, I'm going to say I want to set the, the the thing here to 45 and this one to, uh, let's make it 75. Now, when I generate the pipeline script, notice, okay, I got it backwards. It's ah. 75. And the, 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 the sunshine there tells me, okay, it will be stable, sunny if it's 75% and cloudy if it's 
45% or above. So if it's above 75%, we're stable, we're, we're success. If we're at least above 45%, we're, we're unstable, but okay. If it's below 45, it's a fail. So now there we go. But what this really tells me is I can't see the online help because this UI has no location where I could put, um, <laughs> where I could place the, the, what do you call it? The, the, the help icon, right? right? So the, now, now I could, no, I really couldn't. There isn't any other place to put the help icons because of the, the layout of this UI. I mean, it says, I, I would need a way to put a help icon on this field. And there, there truly isn't a way to do that. Now is, but then there's nothing that groups all the minimum star coverage and maximum star coverage. There, there, the, the one place that groups them would be this documentation. Right. Cause what I was going to say, I mean, I can see that just from the information is all of these, it actually is a nice user interface. It is what right. Want is the help on the always run coverage collection, even if it's failed or good. But I want that, and then I want to see that you've got all of these things that you said a minimum and a maximum, and this is how it works for each one, and they right. all work the same. So, which is actually, in a way, that's actually more useful than having help on each one of these boxes. Just for yuck. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. So we've got six categories here. Let mm -hmm. me see if that minimum one, two, three, four, five. Oh, maximum, I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we do, we have exactly six method, line, instruction, complexity, class, and branch. Right. This is actually brilliant. All we need to do is get a help file on that general statement always run coverage collection. Uh, okay, oh, oh, that's an interest. Well, no, but see, see the problem here is this, this always run collection is actually not associated with these settings at oh, all. Okay, that's a completely independent setting. So, so there isn't a headline that identifies what the purpose of these fields are right now. Oh, right. So for the user, so we need a headline that's coverage collection. Well, now, well, okay, and, and, where is the, now we've got a question mark on fail the build if coverage degrades more than the Delta thresholds. Uh-huh. What is in that? What's on the question mark there? This uh, is but it doesn't tell us what about, those deltas are. And this is only about deltas and these are the Delta values. Right, but that's what I'm saying is we want, okay. If I were deltas? king and I could, I mean, I mean, we're kind of stuck with the interface. I would expand the content of that to then describe all of the deltas. Oh, I see. Yeah. Them. So, so this and then one. do the same thing for always run coverage collection. Have that say check this to do whatever, and then explain what all of these conditions are. Ah, okay. Well, so it's no, a little bit a good... of a kludge, but it gets me the information. Well, but but maybe maybe that's that's again where should we consider um, doing exactly that same technique here with change build status status according to threshold. So yeah. Um, so here we've got a field that says change build status according to thre according the thresholds. Okay, according to the thresholds that is seems like it's associated with the concepts that are in this table isn't it i think so yes i'm looking we don't have thresholds is not a yeah so okay if, so that but if that's I, build over build is coverage thresholds yeah if i don't if i don't build check status. change build status i bet these fields will be ignored Right. And so for me, it seems like this, this, this thing, this is actually the headline, the heading that belongs mm. associated with these six, six, six columns in this table. I think coverage collections, the keyword. 
the, uh, these six, these 12, these, these are the coverage ones. Right. Okay. So, so are you saying then that really this thing should be change build status according to the coverage collection th thresholds? And this one says always run coverage collection. And then these are the coverage correct correction, coverage collection right. thresholds. It's not exactly right, but this is a, this is talking about what coverage collections are. Yeah, so interesting. Okay. Because I'm looking at their build over build. That's about Delta coverage. Mm -hmm. um, change build status is cover. No, that okay. Change build status is also coverage thresholds. Oi. Yeah, well, okay, so let's, let's see what else is, is here or not. Okay, so we've got the deltas. Just a minute. I'm going to put something in that I can recognize. Okay, there's exclusion pattern, exec pattern. We've got those, right? Yes. Okay. Coverage. Okay, so just to see what we've, yeah. All right, so. When I generate maximum branch coverage, maximum class coverage, absolutely. So here it is. Now, if I clear that, it's still set. If I uncheck that, they are still set, huh? Okay, so it's honoring the settings. I just don't, don't I'm not sure I believe it. Well, no, that makes sense that, that on a failed build, I still might want to see what the coverage is, yeah, even if the build yeah. failed. So that makes sense. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm just not clear when. Uh, so I guess maybe the answer there is these these two check boxes that are currently checked are both modifying how the values in the table are applied. Is that is that a fair way to say it? You think that right? Yeah. They're probably saying. Okay, honor the values in the table to change the, the, the build status. And this one is no matter what the build status is, run collect coverage data. Right. Okay. Interesting. All right. Okay. So skip copy of source files. That's that's up in the top stuff, right? Skip copy. Um I, and, I suspect that's this one, disable display of source files for coverage. Yeah. And then we've got source exclusion pattern, source inclusion pattern, and source pattern. Right. And source inclusion okay. is here. Exclusions are here. And those are, again, a case where we would probably need to put the general, the general guidance on those fields in this, this help text and then put additional text on each of these fields so that it shows up in this page. Right. Interesting, okay. And then, and then from the step reference on any of them, I should be able to, oh, I'm not, and I can't right click, let's see the one that's got some context. I can't right click to another page where I would have an example, which was originally what we were talking about. Right. And so, well, and I'm not, I'm not as concerned actually about providing examples because this generate pipeline script, I think is the one true way to generate, to create examples. Uh -huh. If you, if you want an example, you open up the sample step, configure it, and then you press the generate pipeline script button and it does it. Right that then gives you in context help. And it's the benefit of this is it's doing it with exactly the Jenkins version that I'm running and exactly the Jenkins, the plugin version I'm running. Whereas this particular page, the Jococo plugin page on Jenkins.io is always the most recent release. And if I haven't upgraded the most recent release, it may have information that's wrong compared to my installation. Right, but I have no explanation of what this means. I have, I mean, I guess it, it's, it gives, it does give me my code, but if I'm trying to understand what this means. Yeah, it, in order to understand it, you have to click these question marks. And so that's why I think we ought to 
choose for this one to put information about these six columns into the help for change yes. build status, right? So, yes, so take your point. idea of, hey, what, what is instruction mean and what does percent of branches and percent of com percent complexity, et cetera. Right, what does each one actually check for? Right. And then make sure that minimum and maximum means what I think they mean, which is not what the stack flow, what we've, what, not what you got coded right now. Oh, that, I, that makes no sense as to how I understand. I mean, if I say, if I'm checking to see between a minimum and a maximum, it should not require exceeding the maximum to succeed. That's not and, my and, and, and I, this will be a fun one because I think, I think I've got the right interpretation and can I, but it'll be, it'll be a worthwhile thing to, to try to prove it. I think that right. in this case, pipeline, pipeline did something really cool. They exposed internal variable names. And when the internal variable names are poorly chosen, those poorly chosen internal variable names are exposed to the user. Right. And I've, I've got a sort of a classic example, a really embarrassing poster child example right here. Um, let's see this one, not get, we need checkout. I'm going to show you some horrible, terrible embarrassment. Look at this. Okay. So this thing, oh, oh, this is my new version. I got to use the old version. This is, a, this is the one that's got the fix. Here's the ugly version. What the mistake I made was made the, the mistake original Jenkins Git plugin implementers made that I've never corrected until very soon coming up in a new release is this. If I say checkout and I say git and nothing else, well, I'm still, oh, I'm still on the wrong computer. Sorry, Meg. You can tell me what it does. I trust you. <laughs> it just puts, uh, I've got to show it to you. This is just too fun. It's the, the embarrassment factor is amazing because what it does is it, ex it exposes an internal implementation of something that has no user interface in, in anything except in um, pipeline. And the uh -huh. reason, so notice this horrible thing, do generate submodule configurations, false. Oh. <laughs> and if a user ever says true on that thing, they will invoke code that I have never tested that has no automated tests, has uh -huh. no safeguards in it, and I expect to <laughs> die a catastrophic, terrible, horrible death. Aha. Uh -huh. And so, so it's one of these, oh, whoops, somebody looked inside the Git plugin source code, the, the Java code did is what did, and sees there is a variable named generate submodule, can do generate submodule configurations, and they allow the user to set it. That is really cool, except that this thing is terrible code that is not intended to be used by anybody. Right. All right. So sorry, we uh -huh. are we are now at our time and okay. we, we didn't even get through one item. Um, Meg, are there but other topics I have, that we need to I do? have no updates. These people are blowing me off. I don't know what the deal is, but no I will problem. push them more. Um, one thing I would say back to the beginning of this for this, we all the way you talk about the pipeline gen the pipeline documentation, I would refer to this as steps reference. Oh, good. Very good. Yeah, that's that's much more clear. Okay, I can't yeah. tell you how recently it was that I figured out that the snippet generator is generating steps. Right. Okay. And that it ties to the steps reference because we all just, just talk generically a pipeline. Right. And that makes everything make so much more sense. And trying now we've got a new writer trying to make this stuff make sense. And it's like, um, so I would say that the other thing that I would propose after working with you for all this time. So it looks like there is a convention for the HTML file to have the name of the step in it. Uh, and name of the step or name of the variable. Yes, that's correct. Oh, so that somehow perhaps we should have a test. Maybe it doesn't break the build, but puts out a warning. If I try to check in a plugin with a step that does not have the document that does not have an HTML file of that name. Oh, oh, that's a, an interesting idea. An optional check that um, asserts um, help 
is available for every um, pipeline parameter, pipeline argument, uh, pipeline step, and pipeline argument. That's a that's an interesting one. Yeah. Because other you know, otherwise if I'm and because we know we we didn't do the class on how to how to do how to do a plugin. Mm -hmm. There is nothing there. I go out a plug in. I test the code. The code all works. I'm done. Right. This would at least tell me that not quite. We don't, and we could decide. I mean, I'm a doc person. I I might get nasty and and bust them and not let them merge it. But well, I, but that's that is that should be an option left to the plugin maintainer. Mm -hmm. uh, because if that if that test were mandated for everybody all the time, it would hard stop development and people would just find ways to turn it off. Right. So, right. but but there is the concept in plugin development of an injected test. This is a test that is inherited from the parent, and okay. so the the plugin maintainer gets it for free, and that injected test does some things that every plugin is expected to pass. Um, and so this, this, this idea could be add an injected test that checks pipeline arguments, pi checks for pipeline help, for help for pipeline steps and arguments. And now we are forcing them to name their HTMLs in a certain way, but I can live with that because I'm well, also thinking that if, if somebody drops support for a plug in and somebody else adopts it mm -hmm. that that's going to make maintenance much much easier if there is that mapping right you know that i don't have to figure out that somebody was being cute that day and named everything after their pets or mm -hmm. right you know yeah very good so that becomes a rule they need these html files that include the name of the step or the variable or whatever um what about oh god this is going to um the 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 what the declarative um what's the d word i'm god i think the alzheimer's is clicking in declarative pipeline no no the the the, the other generator that goes with snippet generator what does that do oh oh right okay that's i, I think i know what you mean um, you're talking about this thing right here the declarative directive generator. directives that's it what do we have for self-documentation on the directives? Uh, so that, there it's actually pretty strong. Uh, the challenge usually is that, at least for me, it's not always that it does exactly what I want. So for instance, I say stages, and then if I say add a stage, and the stage is going to be named, um, let's see, get the code, stage will contain uh, sequential stages, and we're going to add agent. One of those stages needs to be running on the label that is Windows, and another one needs to be an agent stage that is running on, let's see, CD. well, so let's generate, just see what that does so far. Okay, so here we go. So is this what you were thinking of, which is the direct? I can't see your screen, so. Oh, oh, sorry. All right, I've stopped sharing, haven't I? Just All I can see is your face, which is yeah, lovely. Lovely face, absolutely. What a marvelous face, huh? Here's to the face. Okay, so here is the screen. So if we make this large enough to actually read, so it's, I just added, I generated stages, stage, and then one or more stages to include inside the sequential stages block. And now, yeah, but see, it's, it's for me, the declarative generator is, it works really well in those cases where, where it, it hits what I need. There are times when I, I seem to bump into surprises where, oh, it didn't quite give me what I wanted. So here's agent any, here's, oh no, I would like to be running only on Linux. No, I want only run on FreeBSD. There we go. And now if I do that, so the directive generator, but it's, I, my sense was it's pretty well described and 
here we've got an entire section talking about the directive gener or elements of the directive generator. And then if I remember correctly, in this page, there is actually a, a series of screenshots of the directive generator itself. No, there, there are some code examples. And well, uh, but um, plugins don't add to this to the directives, right? The directives are at Jenkins level. Um, uh, Can a plugin well, add a directive? I think it, let's see if that would be, that's a good question. I think plugins can, for instance, add to any of these things. So for instance, a plugin can add when conditions. And if we check this triggered by is likely added by a different plugin than building tag. Okay. So yeah, plugins definitely can add and, and users, it's again, a, a reason why users should use the generator built into their system as their first choice and only go to the steps reference or to this declarative reference page as second choice. You know something, and that steps reference page that's generated automatically. Uh -huh. This says, read more about how to integrate steps into your pipeline in the steps section of the pipeline syntax page. Uh -huh. It just never tells you that the snippet generator generates steps for helping you with the syntax. Oh, oh, right. So that might be. This Nor might does be the and that's what, and then the pipeline reference, those are the directives, and that's for that you have the declarative directive generator. Right, right. Good point. This, so this boilerplate text that appears on the t at the which top, which was of probably every, written ten years ago, right, long before there was a snippet generator. Well, no, no. Actually, I think it's intentional that it's only talking about declarative, but as a matter of practicality, we owe it to the users to point them to, to scripted syntax as well. So, so this says, okay, here's the pipeline syntax page, and this is entirely declarative. No, it's not. Okay, so there's Go to the one, very little, bottom. one little section on scripted. And what does it say about steps? Wait a minute, it's got a two, two lines down, scroll just a little bit, down, down, down. Down, okay. There are steps. This fundamental part is the step function. The scripted pipeline does not introduce any steps, which that should be that are specific to its syntax. Pipeline steps reference contains a comprehensive list of steps provided by pipeline and plugins. So uh, this takes us to that long exhaustive reference. Right. But when we said I said, where are we going to put examples? And you said, well, better than examples is to use the snippet generator, and that will give you. Right. So, so the steps reference should link should point them to the snippet generator. I think so. Right. So, so this um, this should also have a point or two because there actually is a page on on Jenkins.io that talks about the snippet generator. All right. And so let me find it because the Git plugin links to it. Uh, so here is, let's see, video, no, snippet, syntax, pipeline syntax helper. Oh, come on. Now that's embarrassing because I knew that I had placed trying to persuade people to use the syntax generator the snippet generator and now i don't know what i've done with it that's really sad huh okay good but that's so, bad that they were call it we're referring to it as a syntax generator and the snippet generator we should choose a name and well so but let me show you that one are, are, are there two different no items? well okay so here it's called snippet generator right mm -hmm. and but now you see in this context, what it's doing, it's saying the same thing as what I get here if I click pipeline syntax. So it really is the snippet generator. Pipeline ah. syntax gives me three different choices for what to do with. So there's pipelines, there's pipeline syntax snippet generator, same page, pipeline syntax declarative directive generator. 
Then there is steps reference, which if I remember, oh no, that one just global variables reference. Here's another one, come on, there we go. So again, each of these is part of this overall page that is pipeline syntax. Okay, so snippet generator is part of pipeline syntax. It's, a, it's, it's one of the pages under pipeline syntax, just like declarative directive generator is. Okay. Now, now, I think there's a problem here, right? Snippet generator has this thing in the breadcrumbs, has pipeline syntax in the breadcrumbs. Right. Declarative online docs, oh, that's not, that jumps out. Steps, global variable reference has pipeline syntax in it, but declarative directive generator does not. And I, I think that would be a help uh -huh. if it did. Yeah. And then, then there are, I guess there's an ordering thing here. Some of these pages, some of these links go stay inside Jenkins, others go to the Jenkins that IO doc site. And that's a little surprising to me. The first two stay inside. The next two go outside. But they do say their documentation. Oh, that's right. They've got hint, they've got icons that hint that. Well, no, except look at this. This one stays inside and is actually generating the pipeline syntax docs while we wait. The steps reference is this? Yeah, so. This is so steps reference? So that's this, not linking to the steps reference page. That's bad. No, no, it's, well, it's actually good in that what it's doing is generating the equivalent of that steps reference page based on the plugins I have installed. Uh -huh. So this is my local precisely matched version. So if I hear it, this is a fun one because now I can check uh -huh. it. Notice this time, let's see if we can see, no. Oh yes, nope. Huh, okay, so I'm, I'm not sure. So this is another way that we could teach developers to check their, their online help. If they go to pipeline syntax and go to steps reference, it will regenerate the it will generate the help by reading their their plugin and uh -huh. now okay this is all right yeah look this is my this is my stable machine the machine that i didn't install the new plugin on here's my new machine where i did let's go to the steps reference and we're going to look to see that jacoco plugin got my now it's still generating the page so patience 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 Okay, so now if we look for Jacoco here, expand this, maximum branch coverage, minimum branch coverage. All so my right. text got added. Okay, now, now this reminds that when recording this video, this is the place to point them saying, hey, click this, wait patiently, it will generate it, and then you can go read the help for your, your, your your thing. Right. Oh, I just have a whole new section to write in the training materials, but this is, this solves a problem. Well, uh, so, so, and, and this reminds me that we've got a bunch of places that I, I like your idea of a check. We've got a bunch of places that really need much more. Right. All right. Well, Meg, I apologize. But it's nice We've... that your Git is is one of the better ones, so that's good. Well, it's yeah, but it's been an enormous amount of effort to get it that way, and so right. I'm not sure we're going to persuade other people. Oh, yeah, you should you should invest great large quantities of time in creating online help. So the interesting problem. Yeah. All right. Well. I, I apologize. I need to end. I okay. am going to call us to a stop. Excellent. Uh, any objections if I post the recording of this after it's Not processed? Not at all. Excellent session, Mark. Excellent. All right. Thanks, Meg. We'll see you. Thank ya. you. You take care. Talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.